Welcome everyone to the Moisky News for February 5th, 2020. Today, no, we're not going to cover the Rebecca Long Bailey stuff. I forgot to write and finish the notes. Tomorrow, guys, there will be a stream tonight on this channel, a PMQ stream at 9.30pm GMT. It should be interesting. Yeah, really interesting. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to do something we've never done. We're going to address First Minister's questions in Scotland, not Wales. That would be boring. Why do that? When I can pay attention to another parliament that I find to be semi-amusing, but also means we can pay a little more attention to Nicola Sturgeon, who, upon us leaving the EU, just before in fact, put out a very lengthy statement on the smp.org website. I may well cover that tomorrow. It's quite long, I need to finish reading it and then jot some notes down. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments below. So during last week's First Minister's Questions, Nicola Sturgeon got flayed a little bit because her track record on healthcare isn't that great and it was torn apart by Scottish Labour Party leader Richard Leonard who has also taken it upon himself to slam her during those First Minister's questions for constantly calling for a divisive referendum. No level of irony there, wanting to call on something that divides the nation when ignoring the will of the people from the first one, then again. Her interest is only in one nation of four, and she does love them referendums. The first one, they got it wrong, everyone. It's like Ireland all over again. Vote again until we get the result we want. The Labour member for Scottish Parliament also took it upon himself to savage Nicola Sturgeon over the unfinished hospitals that are costing £1.4 million in charges every month. That's a lot of money to waste on something that isn't complete. With Nicola Sturgeon's position being, and this is an obvious argument, that it is all down to the Tory cuts over the last decade that have been making it more challenging because of the lack of support from Labour to increase borrowing powers. And there I was thinking, when you increased taxes on your people, that that would be enough. Go figure, this time I'd actually side with Labour on it. That's embarrassing. The full quote of what Mr Leonard said goes as follows. Instead of using this parliament to speak to your party about a divisive referendum that people don't want and obsessing about a flag, never mind the symbolism of a flag, Let's look at the symbolism of a sick kid's hospital. A hospital that will not open for a year, but which is costing £1.4 million a month in charges. Which proves, as this week's report by Audit Scotland shows, that with your finance model, we have a transfer of reward to the sector, but no transfer of risk. With him continuing, First Minister this week has shown that you have gotten the wrong priorities. Tomorrow you're speaking to your party faithful, so today why don't you speak to the patients, to the families, to the staff who are being let down in this city? Why don't you take this opportunity to focus on their priorities? Now granted, being First Minister means she has many priorities, and of course, one should respect all the responsibilities and or obsessions. And let's move on to those obsessions quickly, because she did have a response to it, blaming the Tories, continually blaming the Tories, and also talking about a Scottish visa, which would use the existing Scottish tax code to tie visas to employment specifically in Scotland. Genius, by the way. Where's my sarcasm sign? Nicola Sturgeon has kind of been humiliated recently, and it's because an independent Scotland would fail to meet the European Union's membership entrance test. To be considered for the membership, applicants are required to have a deficit no higher than 3%, but Scotland's is over 7%, which means it cannot join the EU. There are other criteria, by the way, and let's not forget here, an independent Scotland's deficit would get worse because of the money it gets from the rest of the UK government. Oops. When the UK left the EU, a sign was broadcast on the side of the European Commission headquarters that said Scotland loves Europe. The SNP hinted that it was paid for and arranged by Brussels. Well, no. No, actually, it was paid for by Scotland. Um, well, the SNP. It's nice to see you advertising. I mean, I know Donald Tusk is all keen for you to join the EU, but you don't meet the criteria, and yet you're still bleating about rejoining. 
how about you fix your economy first and then you consider joining? I don't think the EU want a repeat of Greece. 